this project is unique in the sense that it has provided an opportunity for a tripartite arrangement where the municipality was able to receive direct funding from the European Union to implement with the technical assistance of a curve. And at the same time, Kooko municipality was able to subgrant eight community-based organizations to co-implement on its behalf. This kind of approach is quite unique, it's innovative and inclusive and fosters local ownership of the project and has desirable impact that benefits both refugees and host communities. I would like the world to know that it is very possible to succeed with the local government through direct funding. Through this process of the direct funding from the EU, we are able to achieve quite a number of projects within the space of two years. And the direct funding to local governments will focus specifically those local governments that are hosting refugees. This is very important and it has succeeded in Koboko. We've done it and I think the world needs to know that it's very possible to succeed with local government if they are given the discretionary space to be able to prioritize for themselves and work with the multi stakeholder approach where everybody has been involved. So we should be given the opportunity of local government to think for ourselves because we know what, what we need, we know the pressing needs are. It has happened in Koboko and I think this can be replicated everywhere in the world. The program has introduced a new way of understanding the urban expansion and the provision of basic services because I think the three key words in this sense are that urban expansion has to be planned in this stage, it has to be sustainable, and in order to be sustainable, it has to be participatory. The CRF, Inclusive Urban Development and Mobility Action, was launched in 2019 with the financial support of the EU Emergency Interest Fund. Um, and the aim of the action was to work with cities that are facing important amount of displaced people and wider urbanization. Um, the project was divided in three components. The two first components and the two selected cities were Asosa in Ethiopia and Koboko in Uganda. The third component was the creation of a regional dialogue with seven cities facing similar challenge to exchange on the opportunities and the needs. Koboko component has been seen as a real success. This has really been seen as an example of an innovative action always promoting ownership from the municipality and the people living in Koboko and also this is project sustainability. The EU and Uganda, we've been sorting the refugee response since about 2016, even longer than that with the humanitarian action. But since 2016, we've been very active in this region in West Nile, also in the Southwest. And we've been very pleased to be a partner areas from livelihoods, scaling, environmental protection, justice, and also this area of governance, which is so, so good. And we're so excited about this area in particular, because we've taken such an innovative approach to it. The fact that we've been able to support the municipality so directly um, to put the municipality in the driving seat, to talk about creating local solutions, thermal solutions, this is really unique, and that's why we're excited. And this success has been recognized, that's the thing I want to underline. It's been recognized at the local level. Um, you know, Pana is something we reference consistently in all of our dialogues with them. The fact that regionally we can be here together is just really, really similar, but also globally. And that's something I really, really want to emphasize. Globally, this action has been recognized. Globally, we've been celebrated. 